Hello and welcome back to AFTV in association with uh, Angerati. I'm joined now by Patrick from uh, Car Power Shed. And uh, uh, firstly, Patrick, welcome. Thank you for taking the time again. No problem. Uh, and uh, last year, I remember we were talking about the sort of the nature of your product and heavy fuel oil and, uh, 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 as opposed to diesel, but I don't want to go there just yet. Um, I'll come on to it later. But you, uh, you made some announcements last year about uh, your involvement in Ghana, and uh, can you just give us a bit of update on uh, what's happening there? Okay, Ghana, well, the announcement was made last year. We reached uh, closure with the utility, with a customer, and we are now um, full steam ahead into the delivery stage. The You're ahead of schedule on delivery, I was reading on some of the that's, press. That's correct. So the press has uh, picked up on it that yeah. we are ahead of schedule. So, yeah. um, you know, all good stories can be made great stories. And what makes a great story is being able to accelerate and have the ability to uh, enhance your proposition to a country that is having major power challenges. So it's, it's very welcomed. Uh, will be approximately 60 to 70 days ahead of schedule. Uh, okay. So it's significantly, significant. it's, not, it's not one or two days or one or two weeks, it's a significant, it's a months, but yeah. it's a significant yeah. acceleration. Um, we, we have the ability to put that acceleration in place purely and simply because if you like the production line that we spoke about last year mm -hmm. of having the, the ownership of the shipyard, you're able to increase the production and decrease the production as and when the market drives you to respond quickly. And if the market does face a slowdown, you have the ability to slow that um, build program down. So yes, we're accelerating uh, full steam ahead on the ship. Nice. And it will be in Ghana, the site infrastructure works are being uh, prepared as we speak. So Around September, I was reading. You're reading well, you're reading yes. the right newspapers, right. Uh, the right press. Uh, yeah. It'll be uh, operational in uh, September this year, the first power ship in Ghana. Nice. Uh, uh, and then uh, you've got a commitment for two uh, uh, of those. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is, um, and we were talking about uh, a little bit about innovation last year as well, is uh, you know, how, how big can this go? You know, what, what's your market within uh, car power ship when you're looking ahead? Because the, 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 there is no shortage of the need to supply from the energy side of things. So where are your innovations taking you? Okay, the demand, the demand is there. We all know that. We're all here at AEF. Again, we're listening to shortfalls. So the, demand, the demand's there. We're in the process now. Um, we've started construction on the, the world's first uh, 500 megawatt uh, power ship. So it's uh, under construction at our shipyard in uh, Istanbul. Uh, it's going to produce 500 megawatts. And that's going where? Uh, at the moment, watch the space. There, right. are, there are a few hungry people out there all jostling for position on it. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the 500 megawatt is something that's different. It is a truly utility size power plant that's totally integrated with all facilities modularized and made mobile so to modular to mobile and make the delivery schedule of a 500 megawatt dual fuel so hfo or natural gas with combined cycle making that operational within 120 days is totally so, so, so innovative yeah. innovation it's yeah. an innovation for africa yeah. it's an innovation for the rest of the world but we're focused here uh, on, on Africa, and it is a real game changer for the African utility sector. And, and, and you're building this because you want to prove that you can and show it in operation, or are you building it because there's an order behind it somewhere? We're building it because there is a need in the market. Right. Um, if you take some of the other presses, press releases that you've seen and the press, the press that have uh, gone to going to trade on it are countries like South Africa. It's the big elephant of Africa. And today it's in a current state of a major utility challenge, electricity challenge. And that's that's driven by several things. It's driven by the the delays in new plants coming online, the the old plants having to struggle through for another two years, five years. Not, 
reduced maintenance being done because you're on the borderline of having major blackouts, uh, rolling blackouts continuously. So a 500 megawatt power ship into somewhere like South Africa is 500 megawatt is not a drop in the ocean to a lot of other African countries, it's, but to South Africa, it's 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 a it's a start in the right direction. South Africa, I can see South Africa um, anywhere upwards of two to three thousand megawatts. When you think that is deliverable from um, four or five four or five ships and delivered within the space of eighteen months, now that that is real innovation. That's that's being manufactured, produced to meet the energy shortfalls that are in a huge continent, but a huge country as well. And, so uh, they uh, have the potential yeah. to take that. And, uh, and also quite uh, quickly, and, and I would imagine that there is another unique side to it, and we've been covering it on our uh, network a uh, uh, quite a bit, is, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, a lot of the independent power projects have been focusing on getting renewable power into the grid. We all know the issues with renewable power, and I would imagine that something that you bring, because it's dual flu fuel and everything, it's a, you can also ramp it, can't you? Is it not one of those things that can complement a renewable initiative? It, it, it can, it can complement a renewable initiative. So, yeah. you know, during the, the 12 hours of sunshine, your solar, the, the wind, balancing that out in the evening when there are demands, storage of electricity is obviously the, the, the big challenge that renewables have, um, and it'll get there. But in the meantime, there is this, um, f this bridge that we actually bring along, and we can come along and we can ramp up quickly, we can scale back, we can reduce from 100% to 70%, 50%, 40% downwards and scalable because of the modularity of the the way that the package is designed. Mm -hmm. It gives us the ability to drop off 20 megawatts here, 60 megawatts there, and still be able to run in the most efficient manner through the modularization. And, uh, and then let, uh, let, uh, let's talk about uh, um, uh, another area at the moment. Uh, you know, uh, oil prices are at a low. Uh, but people are also looking at, uh, you know, other prices are going up uh, in, in terms of that. So whenever, whenever it comes to uh, uh, an infrastructure like this, which is reliant on also a different supply chain, you know, you you got to bring this fuel in, sometimes externally and so on. What do you do, you guys do, or how involved are you in de-risking some of those costs? Because I would imagine. The offtaker bears those costs. Isn't that uh, isn't that right? Yeah. Or, or well, we we've got various scenarios in operation today. We have customers who free issue us fuel, and we convert that fuel into energy. So, an energy generation um, is what we are doing. We are providing energy generation. And then, if you take Ghana, for instance, Ghana has gas. It doesn't have the quantity of gas that it needs today to be self-sufficient on gas. It's running um, the majority of its thermal plants on uh, light crude oil. And even with today's crude oil price being low, it's still an expensive fuel in comparison to the heavy fuel oil that we are actually pr that we are producing power from ourselves. Now turbines, gas turbines, they have the name gas turbines. They should run on gas. Um, this technology that we have has the ability for the lowest cost liquid fuel that's in today's market to use that fuel, and as the fuel price in incrementally increases to the point where gas becomes as cost effective as HFO is, when HFO and crude oil prices go through the upward climb, and they will come back, the crude oil price will come back, which will drive diesel costs higher, and it, and it slowly increment the HFO price higher, that then allows us to have the switch to natural gas. So having the fuel flexibility that we have on board, we actually manage that ripple effect and smooth that the peaks and troughs out by being able to stay at a constant pricing structure. Scale one, uh, uh, absolutely, uh, 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 back up the other. So um, you know, when when next for you guys? You 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 you're, you're building this Leviathan, which uh, uh, 
I sense you may already have some business for. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to press you too hard on that. Uh, but you know, how do you see the landscape in terms of you know uh, fast power moving to what I sense is maybe more of a permanent solution as well? You know, because if if something like this is working in Ghana, you know, these things are ten-year deals, right? Aren't they? So we are we are we are we're capable of doing ten years. We're capable of doing five years. With the production line, we can actually deliver a new power ship every 90 days, 100 days from the shipyard. That gives us the flexibility to be as responsive to meet any challenge that's out there. The short term uh, emergency power uh, scenarios that people use that can be delivered in, in three months, we can deliver a power ship for three months. Whereas we have the ability to, to meet the speed, but we also have the flexibility in providing the, the, the cheaper more cost-effective fuel source and that allows the countries to take a five-year vision to get their their master plan their electricity master plan in place to actually deliver their own infrastructure that for allowing them to be self-supportive with permanent base plants rather than relying on this bridging gap that we that we fill for them yeah uh, 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 uh. And do you think that some of the, uh, as kind of as we're coming to the end of our uh, time here, uh, do you think actually there is a place for a product like yours to actually be part of the permanent solution as well? Or would you not go down that the route? Te the technology is what Africa re rely on for a permanent solution. Um, but it's packaged onshore, longer, different stru commercial structuring. So for ourselves, we are a five to ten year bridge for utilities to take stock, get themselves and, into and, and, shape. And, and, would you never take the technology you know about? I mean, forget about the fact that it's on a ship. Would you never take that learning and say, well, look, we can also help with your fixed plant as well? You never, never see never, in, right. never see never in this game. Um, up until a few years ago, Africa didn't have a choice. Yes. They have a choice now um, from their technologies and how they drive and solve emergency solutions through to bridging solutions. And we are there as that bridge solution. Evolution will come. Things will change. Uh, but there's there's much more technology in the bag and innovation in our bag that we will go on to do things differently. Um, and one of the things just to finish off on is the potential um, from these large 500 megawatt uh, power ship you know, of the industry um, to be producing significant quantities of uh, desalinated water from those ships as well. Everybody talks about Africa right. being energy deprived, yes. but there are significant countries and places in Africa that are deprived from water as well. We're in one. And we're in one, yes. yes. Every, every drop of water you get here is desalinated. Every, the five-star hotels are living on it. Yeah. We can bring that to Africa at the same time as power. It is an innovative solution. And we've, we've, we've taken the innovation beyond just electricity now. It's electricity, it's water, it's combined cycle. This is something that... The well, continent has been crying out, has been crying out no for really many years. No one's talking about that, are they? We're just talking about energy. We're not talking about all the other things that uh, uh, that it can uh, uh, it can influence. I, I know last year at AEF you made a big announcement. Are, are, is there anything if I uh, if I can uh, push you that you're looking forward to get out of getting out of this year? Or, uh, are there any sort of big things that there you're will be a press announcement in the near future of another African country who's. Um, closing on a power ship so that'll be the the next headline that you'll uh, read in the you, the you African in the you, African you press. You can't give us a scoop? Yeah. <laughs> you you uh, can't give us a scoop? The country's here, okay. it's present and uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy reading it rather than trying to bust the bubble. <laughs> Perfect okay thank you very much Patrick. No on problem. That note, thank you very it. much. Thanks Pleasure. for making it once time. again. Okay. Thank you. And thank you as well for watching this has been another interview at AEF TV.